there, welcome. Have you ever had a project that you just wanted to put back into the dumpster that you got it out of? Have you ever had one that made you question your decision to be a DIYer to start with? We've nicknamed this the cursed cabinet. My name is Sarah and you're at Ampersand Unique Gifts and Home Decor. If this is your first time here, I hope that you'll consider clicking subscribe and the notification bell so that you'll be notified every time we upload new videos. And if you're a returning visitor, welcome back. If you like DIYs, upcycles, repurpose, thrift flips, organizational videos, organizational ideas, anything like that, then you're gonna like it here. So stick around, see how this went down. I welcome any comments. I'm always looking for feedback. And I'll see you on the flip side. Well, here it is in its beginning glory. So I, I don't understand some of the work that this cabinet had. So it is definitely an antique radio cabinet, but it looks like somebody has tried to do work on it. They've added things. It has the original shelf and holes and things just from where it was a radio cabinet. But the more I look at it, the more I can find things that were done that don't really make sense. Uh, the original top doors had like a hole, like an oval in the middle where you would just put your hand in and pull whichever direction you wanted to open that door. But I'm not even sure that that was the original doors that were on there. And then they tried to fill it in like with just plywood and obviously the veneer is coming off. But yeah, here, I mean, it had this like oval that they filled in with plywood we're going to take these doors off and you know i end up deciding not to even put them back on there but when i do i realize that the hinges so you can see there were holes apparently there were hinges anyway that are not in the same place and these hinges are not where the old hinges were and this wood is completely coming apart this thick piece of plywood and that is literally all it is so i don't maybe it didn't have doors but yet it has those holes in it and i don't know what the groove across the top is but yeah anyway and so whatever was here i mean these are these old slit top screws so they're you know whatever work was done on it was done a long time ago so it's not like anybody worked on it recently here again our shelf the big hole in it I don't question that that was original, but you can see, I mean, look at the edge down here where they cut out new holes for those hinges. So definitely the hinges that were there were not original. And I went ahead and finished taking the veneer off the back, which turns out to kind of be useless later. There's just one thing after another that we did. And then it was like, well, that was, it did work i ended up taking the back off because as things under the veneer are sometimes this was in really bad shape so i pulled all those nails out and took the back off and the obviously there was veneer here and i have no idea why i don't have my hair pulled back it's so like not like me to have my hair hanging down but anyway i didn't get it in the sander but this was just plywood very rough plywood and i'm the one that tried to fill in some of those holes and smooth it out and it just kind of became a lost cause and i don't actually even do that to the other side of it but here i went ahead and just this came off really easily i mean veneer and a heat gun it just it came right off it's kind of satisfying there uh and then i just sanded it smooth any place that was left here i am cutting a new shelf because I don't want one with a big hole in it and I'm cutting it out of the good part of the back so it was kind of out of the middle of the piece of the back because it was all separating and coming apart there on the sides which is why I'm not going to use that same piece back on the back we'll have to make a new one so you can see my husband coming in and trying to make sure I don't cut my hands off and that plywood still had some places so I'm just using some wood filler to try to smooth out some of the places on the shelf. 
I'm using wood filler. I can't get it to focus. I'm using wood filler to try to fill in the disaster from where they cut out the hinges. And then, of course, I had so much left that I just started filling any random holes. But I'm going to use Sculpt Wood Putty, which, oh my gosh, the first time I ever used this, and I really, really like it. Uh, it's two parts. You just take equal parts and you mix them together. So, uh, you know, make sure you wear gloves. I don't know, you know, it suggests, it doesn't suggest, that's just in the instructions. So whatever you call it, suggests, tells you, instructs you. Um, and so, you know, I don't really know anything about this. It's the first time I've ever used it. So I am definitely going to follow the directions and wear gloves there. And you just play with it, mix them together. Just play, like playing with Play-Doh. It's soft and fun and uh, until it's all one color and it's a uniform. So there's no more white and no more pink and you just want to keep mixing it together till it's all the same color. And then I am going to make a quarter and I apologize because I didn't video that. Um, but the whole quarter was missing off of this piece. So I'm just going to work and make a quarter and it sticks on there. It's kind of like working with the Bondo. And now obviously sanding clean that shelf. And then I wiped it off and now I am going to use shellac on it because I want to make sure that when I paint it, it's just the paint will go on smooth and it has the same, uh, you can't see where that wood filler was and the color doesn't come through it. I am so sorry guys, I'm actually really sick all of a sudden, so I am sorry about my voice here. Uh, but yeah, continuing just to sand smooth where I had all that wood filler, it, you know, it is what it is. This part, I really, it did not want to create a smooth place. This is, there's so much of this. If I had left this video without editing things, or if I had recorded everything, this would have been a really obnoxiously long video because it was just do things over again. And this, however, I have to admit, the quarter I did really well with. I did not have to redo that. I was really, really happy with how that turned out. But I'm just sanding smooth at the sculpt wood putty and getting it to look a little bit more like the other quarter. Used some woodworking tools here just to kind of get that groove in there. And this was, you know, I, I definitely shortened this video. You're welcome. And didn't show you, but it was, you know, use a little bit of the tool and then sand a little bit and I'm just sanding by hand after this just trying to make sure it's all smooth and that it matches the edge there and it just yep there you go and of course obviously scuff sanding I'm not going to try to get everything down to the original finish um or the even original uh wood but I did want to just get some of that where the stain was kind of a little uneven, where it had chipped a little bit. By this point, I had worked on the edges inside there so long that I was really just ready to start painting and getting it done. Um, as if that was actually even the only thing left. But I wanted to get the shelf out of here, so I thought I would just show you my back here. Uh, no, seriously, I don't know. I'm standing right in front of the camera. But I'm going to cut out of it. This is actually, I'm cutting this out of a piece of plywood. And this is just making a new shelf. The shelf that was there was square, so it didn't go all the way to the edge. So I am marking where I need to kind of have those little lips come out so that the shelf will fit and go all the way to the edge of the cabinet. And I, yeah, I actually cut it wrong. So I had to do this twice. This was just one of these things. This cabinet did not want to be redone. And everything seemed like it just went wrong. It was totally my fault, but I just couldn't believe it. But anyway, I finally got the shelf in there and it was really good. And so it has two new shelves that don't have holes in them. They go all the way to the side, but this one sits on top. So it has this weird lip in there. So yeah, I, I just didn't notice it before because it had those doors and order still looks good. This is like the end of all the work for that day. And I was just kind of showing myself if anything. And this is where I put more putty in there because it wanted to just still have bumps and bruises in it. I had a terrible time getting it to smooth out. 
cutting a new back this is just a big old sheet of luon and so i wanted to put a nice smooth back on it because i'm obviously not going to be putting veneer on it and i stained the shelves because when i painted it i didn't want it to distress back to some weird color and then i just used my brad nailer to hook them in there i didn't use the screws and this is i'm just washing it actually this is just a wet wipe um because i just wanted to actually see it was so filthy and dusty and i can't blame the cabinet for that that's because it's been sitting in the shop forever waiting for me to tackle this because it just when i got it home it was obviously more work than i had anticipated and i just could not make myself do it so finally i need to get it out of the way start i'm still trying to get all the products and stash done so i'm using iod trimmings trimmings mold one trimmings one and i'm going to do something about that edge to try to give it a little um design so it doesn't just look like a piece of wood stuck in there but i'm out in the shop i thought i could use baking soda to dust my mold but you it's supposed to use cornstarch and the baking soda really didn't do the trick so i definitely recommend not being lazy and going in the house and getting the cornstarch and i'm using this das or dos i don't know clay i had picked this up i didn't have any iod clay on hand which is really honestly my favorite but i didn't have any and i don't even know if i have a stock as close by because i usually order it online but i wanted to use this and it, I, this is me discovering it's gray apparently i had picked up stone and not even realized it because i had seen people use this before but theirs was white like the iod clay and this is it's like making me very dirty um but at the end you know i mean i really kind of thought it's probably better that i did this because it was dark instead of that white so that if the paint you know when i distressed came back it was like well actually it's probably even better um, so I made a big long snake, you know, anybody that's ever played with modern clay or play-doh, I know that you have made little snakes. So I rolled it up and I put it in the mold there. The IOD molds have a micro rib, so it has a little edge around the, whatever it is that you're making. And it makes it so easy to just kind of pull off the excess and have it have the perfect edge. So I really, really love iod molds and you could actually use these i don't recommend using the same one that you've used your stone clay in but uh, you could actually use these to make chocolates and stuff i mean they're food safe um again i don't know that i would use the same ones maybe if you clean them really well this is right here where it doesn't want to come out that's that's why you use the cornstarch and the baking soda or the uh yeah baking soda didn't really work very well but i'm going to use tight bond glue to glue it on there i am going to glue it on wet but this is another one of these things where things just didn't work as expected this clay was so soft maybe i should have let it dry a little bit but you know i mean the iod clay obviously is soft too but this was it, it was like i couldn't hardly work with it maybe i should have let it dry a little bit longer um to be honest the entire package is written in i think fridge so um yeah i couldn't actually read anything that it said to do but i'm gonna glue it on there and i'm gonna go ahead and go all the way across and cover up that edge and give it that design and I don't actually show it or make a big deal about it, but I'll just tell you about it while you watch me go through the rest of this. It was almost like it melted. You know, so I left it and then came back to it the next morning and it was almost like it had melted. It kind of ran down. The design was very, um, I don't know, not very defined anymore. So it still looked better than that original just edge of that plywood but it's uh, definitely not really defined and it just kind of goes with I guess the whole look of all of it I would have had to put the original piece back on there I broke it of course but um, when it went on really well when I glued it back on so I'm not too sad about that and I also wanted to shellac the areas where I had sanded especially where I had tried to fill in that plywood because I only did one side and I didn't want it to be real obvious but I shellacked the top as well 
and um, actually I think this is just clear coat because I ran out of shellac but either way I did a spray and now I am putting that back on with my brand nailer and that part was actually pretty easy except that you know it was almost like it didn't fit anymore so I did have to sand a little bit over on the side that was kind of weird but it uh, it was just like I mean the tiniest bit over on one side but I went ahead and put it on there and then I just sanded the edge with a hand sander so I don't know I I have no idea where I got this paint it is mud puddle by Dixie Belle so the color is mud puddle and you know if you have been watching my videos then you know that I am really trying to work through my product stash as well as my project stash so I am working on items that are sitting around the shop and getting in the way that I'm also trying to work through all these products without buying new paints and using what I have and this color just seemed like it would be a really cool color for this cabinet it's a real natural almost gives a little bit of a pink hue to it but it's kind of a taupey and you know how taupe sometimes has that pink look to it so but anyway here I am just painting I did the whole top and then see there's the plywood this is the side I didn't try to fill in the holes uh, because I had already decided by this point I was going to use the IOD paint inlays so I decided I'm just I'm not going to try to fill that in and make it smooth and obviously I'm not going to put veneer back on it but that's what it looked like underneath there and and that's normal for old furniture where um, you know I mean the wood that they use is not the best because of course obviously they put veneer on it the bottom part of this and then the edges on the sides I'm actually using the oh, Americana folk art in the color carbon and I really do love that black it's very chalky and so here it is with it's this is one coat on everything so you can see I'm going with that two-tone look here is my paint inlay and these are really such an awesome idea so these are actual paint on these sheets and so the design is there it is paint it is not like a transfer these are actually paint and so once you have your first coat on everything then you go back with your second coat and you're going to put your second coat of paint on there but while it's wet you want to get your paint and lay on there so here i'm you know i'm getting my second coat and i'm going to carefully edge and get that on there and um while it's wet again you're going to take that paint inlay and you're going to press it down now you want to make sure one side has a grid on it so it allows you to be able to light it up and make sure that it's straight and then the other side has the paint it actually sounds really ridiculous to say that you could get confused but it's actually kind of hard to tell when you're looking at them when you're first getting used to using them and I I know other people that have done this and they've put the uh, nod paint side down into their paint you could also use a clear coat when you do this a liquid or I'm sorry like a like a liquid patina or big top from DIY and you could use a clear coat so you don't have to do it necessarily in your second paint color but you're just going to take that you're going to lay it down and press lightly and you really want to be careful not to shift it and I decided not to bother trying to cut it before I put that second coat of paint on there. I could have actually have um, you know measured and made sure that it was the right. But I knew there wasn't really going to be enough of the edge to mess with it. So then you spray it with water on the you know on the back side and take a a damp towel. This is just a paper towel that I had sprayed and gotten kind of wet. And you're going to press down and make sure that everywhere in here that your paint is pressed into your wet paint that you just put on there but again be really careful not to you know move it around or you'll smear your design and I mean it'll still be on there but some of that detail won't show up if you have smeared it here it is dry um, I actually let it dry for about two hours while I worked on some other projects and you come back and once it's dry to the touch so you know your hands you can tell that it's dry then you come back and you get it wet 
again so i've just i used my mister bottle and sprayed it and got it really wet if you start to pull back and it gives resistance then go back and spray it again and make sure that you know that again that it's really wet and you want to save these sheets you can actually get multiple uses out of these it's just going to be a little bit more faded each time now because I have that brown paint on there when I use it again um, it's going to have that you know that mud puddle paint color in it so you want to kind of pay attention to what you put it in and you can line these up they they'll line up and you could do the whole like if I wanted to do the whole front of a cabinet or a dresser you know these designs will match up and line up so that you can use them or you can just use one sheet at a time each one comes with eight sheets so I'm just giving everything a good light sand and this is just to really smooth out my paint it's not you know I'm not trying to do too much but here I you can see I went back I distressed it and brought back some of that original wood color I even sanded and distressed here on the edges where the paint inlay is but this is um before I wax that was what it looked like but now I am using clear wax this is just ferrothane wax of the color natural but that's what I'm using to seal with you want to anytime you use a um, a clay based paint or a chalk paint it's important that you seal it in and so I'm choosing to use wax to seal it I'm going to actually um, do the entire thing I won't force you to have to watch but see how rich it makes that black paint look once you use that wax that's why I'm showing you the bottom and I don't think I actually messed with showing you wax while I wax the top but it was a lengthy process because I did all the feet and everywhere around there and now I am using sweet pickens uh, beeswax in the color dark it looks like shoe polish but it's not um, and I am using a shoe polish brush because I bought an old stool that ended up being a shoe polish stool and it had all these brushes in it. I mean, it was packed full of them and they are they just come in so handy for all kinds of stuff but anyway that's yes that was actually a shoe polish brush and I put that wax in there and I made sure it was in all the divots and everything so that it looked very natural to the piece and then I used that dark wax over over the entire piece because anywhere I sanded back and got to that wood it looked uh, it brought back that dark color so it didn't look all fresh it kept it looking old and you can see where the paint inlay is down inside it has all the rough and wrinkle in that plywood um, but now I am using another shoe shine brush and I am buffing out that wax and it just brings back kind of a beautiful sheen and just you see I just go through there's kind of before sorry my camera didn't want to focus and then what it looks like when you buff it it just makes it very pretty it's a very natural looking so now I have a big hole in the center to deal with so here you go I am going to use this doily and I picked this up from Upcycle by Brie during one of her whatnot sales and I had a whole set of them I don't know if they were they were I think four all the same size so I'm not sure what they would have been for they were like placemats but it was the perfect size to put here and I really liked that it wasn't bright white it was a nice natural color and I just am kind of trying to center the design the best I can and obviously just using my hand stapler to get that in there and my husband to the rescue he comes and helps me I had this old yardstick and it was the perfect color the, that old wood color matched where you could see the wood distress back and it was that same beautiful old wood and so we cut it down to make the frame just to hide my staples so um, he you know drilled holes and countersunk them for the screws so that we could get that in there and then help me to put that on there so sometimes you just need more hands and a little extra thought process and how to make your vision come true and so he helped me with that and now I'm just putting those original glass knobs back on there I don't think they were actually original original uh, but one of the things we discovered that so I didn't make you suffer through watching but is the holes for the knobs were not even from the edges so we actually ended up having to recut our little wood frame and make it a little bit smaller and I had to move the staples where I had the doily on there 
Uh, this is the very last thing I am excited to show you here. This is the very last thing I had to do. I'm putting all the original hardware and this is the chain. And I have never been so happy to have a project finished. Um, had to get a little more leverage here because I had to do things over and over again so many times on this. But I hope you like how it turned out. Let me know. Should I put it back in the dumpster or was it worth it in the end? Let me feel your love again. Cause I've been running round in circles screaming out your name. Take me to a different place. Just the two of us and we can stay up all night. Kissing under street lights. Doing what we want to. Doing what we need to do. Staying up all night, everything is alright 